Hello, biology students. Today we're going to be talking about domains and kingdoms. How do we organize all these different living things into big categories? Domains and kingdom are the biggest of these categories. We're going to learn about what those different things are. Let's jump in. First, let's talk about domains, which is the largest category of classification we have. There are currently three major domains that we as scientists have decided exist. They are as follows, bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. When we think about these different categories, we're really talking about how we are branching out all living things into those three categories. And there are major characteristics of the things in those three different domains. And then each of them we'll learn about in more detail throughout the rest of this unit. Let's jump into learning about the first of these domains. The first domain we'll talk about is bacteria. This is a prokaryote. It also has the kingdom eubacteria, eu meaning true bacteria. It is one of the largest groups on Earth. It is usually classified by the shape of the organism, which is a bacteria organism. Does it have oxygen and the diseases it calls, it causes? Because this is a prokaryote, we know that prokaryotes have no nucleus, and they're very small and simple. So when we're talking about you bacteria and just bacteria in this domain in general, we're really talking about the common bacteria that kind of make us sick. We'll learn about bacteria a lot more in a future set of notes. The next type of domain is archaea. I like to think of archaea sounding like the word ancient. This is also a prokaryote, meaning no nucleus and very simple. It houses the kingdom Archaea. That's pretty easy to remember. The domain and the kingdom are the same. Now, compared to the previous domain, the cell walls are a little different. You don't have to memorize right now what that difference is, but they're slightly different. But these ancient bacteria live in extreme environments. And when we say extreme environments, we mean things like no oxygen, no sunlight, super high pressure, super salty. Archaea bacteria have even been known to live in space. The last category is eukarya. Eukarya sounds a lot like the word eukaryote, and that's because all of the eukaryotes are in this category. Remember, eukaryotic cells have a nucleus. They're super complex and they tend to be our multicellular organisms. There are some that are single celled. So here are the kingdoms we're talking about here and we'll learn about each kingdom in detail throughout the rest of the unit. The first one is protists. Protists are weird because we don't know a lot about them so far through biology. Notice that this protist is seen in a microscope. It has a whip-like tail we know is a flagella and it's single celled. But because it's a eukaryote we know it must have a nucleus. We'll learn more about protists later. It also includes the kingdom plants. Remember plants are everything that you see outside from grass to trees all the way from weird plants like this one in the botanical gardens that smells like dead rotting meat. Ew. The next category is fungi. Fungi are everything from mushrooms to molds to slimes and even our yeast that we use to make bread. Fungi are weird, but they're not plants, right? They do things slightly differently, and we're going to learn how to make sure we know the difference between a fungus and a plant during this unit because you can't get them backwards. The last category is Animalia. Animals, which we're way more familiar with because we are one, and animals are everything from insects to octopus to humans, and even things that are super bizarre like this sea creature. Great job, guys, learning the basics of domains and kingdoms. In class, we'll practice this, and eventually we're going to learn about each of these kingdoms in way more detail. So you're going to have to be able to tell the difference between each of them. All right, see you guys then.